Let's never lose sight of the fact that every human being is an individual, a person with feelings, ideas, and dreams. As the renowned Israeli poet Zelda Mishkovsky wrote, Lechol ish yeshem shenatan lo elaim venatnu lo aviv veimo. Unto every person there is a name given to him by God and given to him by his parents. And yet history has shown us that there are always those who believe that some lives are worth less than others because of their faith, because of their nationality, their ethnicity, or even their ancestry. From Australia to Argentina, from the United Kingdom to the United States, Jews have been attacked on streets for wearing a kippah. Their businesses have been vandalized, and riots have erupted outside the synagogues. These are not acceptable protests. They are the words and actions of bigots who seek to demonize the democracy and its people. According to reports from the World Zionist Organization, and listen to this, the numbers are absolutely staggering. There's been a 130% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in the United States, and over 400% increase in anti-Semitic events in Europe, and a 1,200% increase in South America. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you a story of a young mother named Anna and a six-month-old baby. The two left their home in the center of Paris on a beautiful spring morning and walked the short distance to a nearby station. As they stood, waiting for the bus, an elderly woman walked up to, the, to Anna and yelled, Dirty Jews! Enough with your children already. And the elderly woman began violently shaking the baby's stroller. People passed by without saying a word. 400 miles away, in the heart of Berlin, a 12-year-old boy named Shmuel stood at a metro terminal. As he stretched to his backpack looking for a sandwich, a group of teenagers walked up and shouted, look, the Jew is eating our bread. Jews are stealing our food. And although the station was crowded with commuters, no one said or did anything. The attack on Shmuel took place in 1937, while the attack on Anna took place two months ago. 77 years may have passed Yet it seems that there is little difference for a European Jew in 1937 and 2014. There are countless Jews, all with a name, a family, and a story who have found themselves under attack in recent weeks. Anti-Semitic rhetoric morphed with violence and led to the firebombing of a synagogue in Wuppertal, Germany, earlier this month. It reminded me of the first torching of a synagogue that took place in Nazi programs in 1938. Where is the outrage? Where are the universal calls of condemnation? My friend, the silence of 2014 sounds very, very similar to the silence in the 1930s. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that we all have a responsibility, each and every one around this room. We all have a responsibility to stand up and fight, and we all have a responsibility to stand up and win. We're here in the heart of the United Nations, where the countries of the world are represented. When you walk through the gates, you pass the flags of 193 member states. There are 25 flags with a cross on them, 
15 with a crescent, and only one single Jewish star of David. For some people in some nations, one Jewish state is one too many. They would like to see us to see the day when Jews are once again scattered, homeless, persecuted, and defenseless. Throughout history, bigots found a pretext to hate the Jews, either because they were too rich or because they were too poor, either because they were capitalists or because they were communists, either because they kept them to themselves or because they were assimilated. There's no logic or reason for that sort of hatred. As Israeli peace activist Amos Oz pointed out, in the 1930s, anti-Semites declared Jews to Palestine. Today they shout, Jews out of Palestine. They don't want us to be there, they don't want us to be here, and they want, don't want us to be. Ladies and gentlemen, here in the United Nations, Israel is under attack on a daily basis. The attacks may be masked as criticisms of Israeli policies or the Israeli government, but let's not be fooled. When heads of state and ambassadors in this institution compare Israel to Hitler and the Nazis, is this legitimate criticism? Of course not. It is just the newest incarnation of the world's oldest hatred. The danger today is greater than even before because Israel on the front line is on the front line of fighting against extremist, racial extremism. What is at the stake today is truthfully the future of freedom itself. Israel is surrounded by violent and radical groups that suppress the rights and beliefs of millions of people and yet it has shown that it can be and still be and maintain itself as a true and vibrant democracy. To have a free press and to have an independent judiciary each and every day under enormous pressures since the establishment of the State of Israel. It's time for the rest of the world to pick a side. Will you stand up? Or will you stand with terrorist groups that shoot rockets into cities, kidnap girls from their classrooms, cut off the heads of journalists, and execute minorities? Or will you stand up with democratic nations that believe in human rights, tolerance, and freedoms? I walk the halls of the United Nations every day, tall and proud of who I represent and what I represent. We ask you all to stand tall beside us because it is the right thing to do and because there really isn't any other choice. Thank you very, very much.